You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's The Real Housewives of Miami After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Real Housewives of Miami After Show. <laughs> All righty. Happy Labor Day, everybody out there listening and or watching. Uh, Bing is for doing, and tonight we're here doing another after show for Real Housewives of Miami. This is season three, episode four, Black Magic. I'm your host, Michelle Renee. Uh, I am joined with my lovely co host. Hi, I'm Jake Dupree. Um, and Brooke is not going to be with us tonight, but um, she'll be joining us uh, next week, hopefully. So we're going to get started with the episode. Uh, this week's episode was, uh, I give it a seven on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. So, Jake, seven. I hope, or... Hopefully this episode's going to like launch us into some real drama, because I feel like there needs to be, I feel like this is a building episode. Yes, the, the climax is coming. Mm -hmm. um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of appropriate considering that this entire episode was about, was like, about sex. sex or the lack thereof between uh, the Everyone. couples on the show. So, um, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, the episode starts off with uh, Joanna and her fiancé, Roman. Mm -hmm. um, house shopping, I thought. They pull up in a car. Yeah, and he she has a necktie around her eyes. And he's like... This is our house. But do you feel like she knew that this was their house before? Well. Because it already had stuff in it, too. That's why I felt. Like, at first, when it first started and she had the blindfold on, I'm thinking, like, okay, he already gave her the house. I mean, the car a few episodes ago. Now he's going to surprise her with the house. Like. I feel like she wouldn't be okay with being surprised with the house, though. Yeah. But yeah. then, like, when he's like, oh, well, the movers are coming. It's like, oh, well, so you've already discussed this. This is already a house that you've purchased. Yeah. Like. It, it just, it didn't really... The continuity was a yeah, little Yeah, the continuity was <laughs> off. So it's like, I'm surprising you with this house. And by the way, all of your belongings have been packed up and they're being moved in. Uh -huh. And we're officially living here. So that, to me, was a little off. Um... I think she wanted it to look a little sweet. Like, oh, look at all this stuff is Roman's doing for me. Isn't that great? No. Yeah. E no. Gross. But I guess it kind of segued into their whole relationship drama with yeah. the lack of sex because she she jumps on him and she's like doing like a dry hump thing and he's <laughs> like the movers are coming the sky is falling like he gives all these reasons why he's not going to try to give her why a quickie why doesn't he want to have sex with her that's what i need to know i i need to know that because out of anyone she'd be a girl i would want to have sex with yes she's a girl that we want we both want to have sex with <laughs> Um, and he's a guy that we both want to have, have sex, sex with, with. Yeah. also. So I, I really don't get it. Maybe and they should have sex with not less, like less attractive people. Maybe who they're like too attractive. They're like, you're too attractive to have sex with. No, no. Just I me. just, I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. The, the, at least the guys that I know, even if they're tired of a girl, even if they've been there, done that. They're not going to pass up the opportunity to, like, get a piece. Yeah. So it just, I don't know, it bewilders me that he's, like, he just is making every excuse in the world not to jump her bones. The penis to me, doesn't want to pick it. It does. Okay. You know? I yeah. mean, does he have erectile dysfunction? He's embarrassed? Or <laughs> is it just, I mean, the natural thing that's going to come to everyone's mind, though, is that he's sleeping with someone else. And that, that's, I mean, that's what I said when we watched the episode. I was like, he's totally sleeping with someone yes. else who gives it to him better, probably. You but think? then I, I still don't understand, though, because even if someone's giving it to you better, more frequently, <laughs> whatever, you, it, at least the guys I know are never going to pass up a piece of tail. And I maybe mean, I just know a bunch of hoes, which I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the case. But, yeah, not saying that they're passing it up on me. That sounded bad. But 
Um, yeah, so I don't know. That's just, I don't know. That's. It's strange. It's Something's yeah. not right. It's strange. And once it's... every month and a half, like almost two months, once every two months. Yeah, and that. Are they talking about full-blown sex? Are they talking about other things? Are they not counting other things as sex? Like I think they're talking about, like, intercourse. I don't think they're talking about, like, any other type of like oral or anything oh, okay. like that I would imagine but it's also an issue because like I mentioned last week in last week's after show they're not married yet like this is something that people I guess experience when they're married I'm not married so I don't know but well, it's I think, more I think so it, common when someone's married that kind of after a while the sex starts to die I down mean, they've, been, and, they've been together for six or seven years or however long and I, there are periods where it's like lulls and that just because that's just natural. I mean, we've I've experienced it, and I've been with her for three years. I mean, yeah. It's just a part of it. Mm-hmm. But it's still like you, if the opportunity presents itself, you take it. Yeah. That's how I feel. And he doesn't obviously want to take it for some reason. For some reason. Do you, do you find any I, – we maybe can get to this a little bit later when she goes to counseling, but – do you find any validity in the argument that he's emasculated because she's saying like no. you're the woman in the relationship or no I think he he's strong enough to be like I don't really care what you say like I don't know it's just strange yeah. it's there's weird. something going on that is shady to me something deeper mm-hmm. he's really gay and he is hasn't come out yet he doesn't want to be with her anymore that would be awesome I'd be down <laughs> for that <laughs> you're definitely down for that literally um so <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> next to the episode, um, we see Marisol and Alexia doing a psychic reading of sorts. Yes. <laughs> um, and me and you both looked at each other and, like, laughed. Because I mean, it was, it was like, just, funny. It's just weird. It's just strange to me. I mean, I've been to a psychic before, and she did tarot cards. It was awesome. It was good? Like, yeah. Did you feel like she gave you, like, mm-hmm. valuable things? Mm-hmm. But how long ago was that? Like... A year ago, basically. And did she tell you anything that now is coming to fruition that you're kind of like, whoa, she... No, it was right around the time that I started getting into more hosting stuff, and mm-hmm. she kind of said something about that, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Without then, you, like, telling mm-hmm. her I didn't prompt anything. And she said I had just moved to L.A., and it was... Yeah, I had just moved. And she also said stuff about my relationship and also about a friend that I had passed away. She said a lot about that. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it was, very, it was very cool. I've never been to, and I guess we're kind of, like, getting off topic, but I've never been to a psychic or, it's like, scary. tarot card It's anything. scary. Because I had a friend in high school go to one, and she was told, like, oh, well, you're going to be, like, married twice, and, like, your first love kind of isn't going to be, like, your real love. And wow. I'm like, no matter who, who you marry that, now, yeah. like, it's doomed from the get-go because you've heard this these words out of this lady's mouth. So I just kind of have always stayed away from that. But it's, and then it, you see Candy, and I'm always referencing other housewives, but like Candy from Real Housewives of Atlanta, they get their kind of fortune read by this like medicine man in Africa, and, and he's like, the person that you're gonna marry is with you now. Yeah. It's like so creepy. And then it turns out that he, he was, was Todd, the, he was on, on the production trip, yeah. crew. And then Kim Zolciak uh, were visiting uh, her. Yes. And Rose. she was gonna get married and have th- four kids now. Four more kids. Yeah. Whew, gosh, yeah. Can she stop already? <laughs> so, um, it, the, the psychics on the, the psychics, ter- what, what, what are they called? Psychics? What's another it has appropriate a, a medium, word? For them? Psychic, medium, psychic. Yeah. Medium, medicine man or woman. They always seem Sarah. to be pretty accurate. Sarah. A s- Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. Soothsayer. Yeah. Soothsayer. Yes. yes. <laughs> they always tend to be pretty <laughs> accurate on the Housewives shows. Yeah. But this lady, I was not buying it. I mean, no. it it really worked with the storyline of the show. I will say that. It did. Oh, maybe a little too well. It worked a little <laughs> too well. Because <laughs> she was like, here, separate into threes and pick up this card. What, what do you want these cards to represent? She's like, I want to focus on my mother's health. The woman turns it over and finds, like, the devil and someone's done black magic and just so happens to be a woman in her 50s with blonde, short hair and, like... And blue eyes. And blue eyes. And boom. It's Leah Black, obviously. Yeah, duh. Okay. So that's why I'm thinking she's a little weird. And then she's like, yeah, kind of get away. I mean, Alexia kind of was like, well, my energy is too strong. 
I don't want to affect your reading. It was very shady, and though. And then the lady's like, like, I agree. Get I away. Agree. I can't do two readings <laughs> at one time. I can't do two readings well, no, at one time. she wanted to do two readings at oh, one time. Oh, she did? Time. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And then Alexa was like, no, 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 next time. No, no. you got too many things in my closet that I don't want you to reveal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. I guess the question for us to kind of delve into is, do you think that Leah Black would actually do black magic? No pun intended. Oh, I didn't even uh, catch on to that. Do black magic on... Because that's what the psychic was implicating. Yeah. That Leah had done some kind of black magic curse to... Curse on her mom. To curse on her mom to make her ill. I don't think it... Well, I don't think that she would do that because I felt like her and Mama Elsa were friends. Mm-hmm. Even above... Even though Marisol and her were having problems, I felt like Mama Elsa and her kind of like got along. So maybe it was a curse on... Marisol and it just affected her mother. You never know. But you think Leah Black in general would do curses? I mean, I don't know about that, but like they they don't live in Louisiana. Like it's I'm not like they just like tr- walk next door and are like, hey, like yeah, it's <laughs> this is Miami, Florida. Like how prevalent is black magic in Miami? What do they go I to like the know. bayou and like find some like random? Yeah, lady that's in what I'm saying. Like, like hey, like help me out. I need to put a curse on someone. Like make her fall down. She hit like her head. touch my little head and uh, gather. Yeah, you know, I like, don't, weird thing. I mean, I don't. As <laughs> malicious as these women can be, sometimes, and as you know, Leah Black has a lot of you know biting sayings that she you know throws out there. But I don't really see her going as far as to put a curse on someone and let alone someone's mother that's I know. elderly. They, if she was going to put a curse on anyone, I think it would have been Marisol. Or but Anna. Her mom, or, or, or Anna, Anna yeah. yeah. But, like, what, what it's is... It's a stretch. Yeah, it's, it's a, a stretch. stretch. I, so, the, the psychic is getting no points with me because I just think it was... I don't know. A little contrived. It was a little contrived. I agree. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... It, do we do we have anything? No, yeah. we're done with the psychic. Uh, um, so moving on. Uh, the next kind of little piece that they show us is Lisa and Leah. Mm-hmm. Um, with their house, with Lee, Leah's house being reconstructed. Fabio and Hernan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. So they have nothing at all to do with any of the drama that's been going on. And Lisa randomly brings it up. Yes. So, again, like, another contrived moment. Yeah. Like, the entire conversation that they have about the drama that This would never transpired. come up. Yeah. This would never come up. The entire conversation, they just sit there and are, like, looking at each other and kind of like, oh. Like, this smiling in the doing. background. Yeah. Like, and the production crew is, like, giving them a high five. Like, probably, like, yeah, Good keep job. it going. Because <laughs> they have nothing to do with this. So that was kind of an off moment for Lisa to bring up. Yeah, it was uh, weird. the drama that happened at what was the name of the nightclub? Block, blocks. Oh lord, I can't even blocks. remember. Blocks. I don't know. It started with a B though. But I mean, Leah was like really upfront with Lisa, and she was like, "I don't want you to come between us." She's yeah. like, "Stay out Just of it." Just stay out yeah. of it. I mean, I guess that's. I think that's good, but I think they need someone to like kind of mediate too. But they're grown ups; like they should deal with it on them- themselves, like all by themselves. I think the issue with Lisa being a mediator is that. It's not from a neutral standpoint. Like, what I've seen on uh, this week's episode and then kind of past episodes is that she tries to mediate, but she doesn't do it from a neutral standpoint. When she mediates, it's when she's with this person, she kind of takes their side a little bit. When she's with that other person, she kind of takes their side a little bit. And not to the extreme, but it's kind of, you know, even like tonight when she agrees to be Adriana's, like, bridesmaid and, Mm -hmm. you know... How is Leah going to feel about that? Upset, I'm sure. How is Joanna going to feel about that? And then earlier, in a few episodes ago, she questions her and Joanna's relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't expect Joanna to want to have a relationship with you and be one of your best friends if you're going to agree to be a bridesmaid in exactly. someone's wedding who she hates. So I think she she's trying to mediate, but she needs to be more neutral if she's going to be a mediator. And she's going to be caught in the middle yeah. in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, it's and she's just, you know, it just depends on who she's with as to whose side she takes. So yeah. I think that's her issue. Um, I wrote down, um, let's see. She Okay, so she, I guess Leah, wait, uh, okay, so they, they'd speak about how Leah was hooking Adriana up on dates. Yes. And she was, I mean, it's just like all these random details keep like coming out as the story mm-hmm. goes. And I'm like, are we just making these up? Or are we like, I don't know. 
on both sides. I'm like, they're both, I feel like, just trying to make the other one look bad. So they're bringing out all these details that should have come out in the first place, I think. So I don't know if I necessarily believe that she was setting her up on dates. Because Frederick was still in the picture. They just had called the wedding off. So yeah. why would she set her and up on dates? And that's what I wrote down. I'm like, where was Frederick while he, while his fiance was going on dates? While his yeah. girlfriend, even oh, if yeah. it was just his girlfriend. Like, Fian- I mean, I'm sure no if your fiance. boyfriend was like out, like, on a date or would you'd prob- be like where no. is he you know like <laughs> why haven't I seen you tonight oh you're on a date okay cool so yeah that just to me is a little far-fetched like he wouldn't and I mean don't get me wrong I'm on Leah's side I yeah. mean I think Adriana's full of it but that to me doesn't make sense that she's setting her up on dates and fre- dates well, she plural said, well, maybe she said one that, or two dates but. she said that she was setting her up on dates because Adriana said that Frederick couldn't support her financially and support her lifestyle. So mm-hmm. that's why she was looking for dates. But that was never, uh, like, that's never been brought up ever. Ever. Like, why would she ever say that? Well, I mean, they do kind of touch a little bit on the fact with the whole schooling issue with but her also, son. They kind of touch their, on the look fact at her that, house like. house and, like, look at the boat that he's buying, all these mm-hmm. vintage cards. So I don't think that money's an issue for him at all. Yeah. So. I don't know. He's but... just trying to drag her through the mud I think so in this case we get, we're get we gonna give one point to Adriana yes okay alright <laughs> my team my team team Adriana <laughs> so yeah um, we'll, we'll I guess retouch re- revisit that a little bit later uh-huh. more on that later because this again this whole season is about their relationship and hating, if hating, it hating. was if it wasn't if they were engaged if they were married if they were divorced like we Who don't know we're shit, still yeah. trying to figure out um, moving right along uh, Joanna, mm-hmm. back to the beginning of the episode, she goes to therapy, what is supposed to be a couple's therapy for their intimacy issues. Yeah. And Roman doesn't show, show up. up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he doesn't show up because he's angry at Marta. Uh-huh. Okay. What we later find out is that he thinks that Joanna doesn't stick up for him. Yes. So... Um, I think you still show up. At least deal with it in person. I yeah, think. you show up and then address that issue. You yeah, like and if there's if, anyone you address it to, like let it be a therapist. That, like, that's let that amazing. be the therapist. Exactly. Yeah. Like so, you're angry at the person and you don't show up because I mean to me that just seems weird. Like childish. It just seems stupid. Like if you're mad at Marta and like last season we would always talk about. Well, you thought that like. There was sexual tension, tension between, between the them. Two. Well, I think I was like, why if if she if Marta was like, he's cheated on you, and I've heard of this, and he gets so upset about it, why? Exactly. If I wrote it didn't that down happen, too. if it didn't happen, why get upset? Why are you being so defensive? Mm-hmm. There's some truth in it, because as soon as someone says something that you've done, you're like, oh, and you get so flustered and so crazy. It's probably true. Yeah. And for him so. to let it affect it affect him to the point where he's not going to come to therapy, it's like, yeah. you're just making it worse, dude. Uh, so I thought that was definitely like a dumb move on his part to forego therapy because he was mad at Marta. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that have to do with Joanna? If you're trying to better the relationship with you and Joanna, then, you know, who cares what Marta, Marta is saying? Says. Then let, let, why don't you prove her wrong? Why don't you show Marta, like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe that was in the past, but look at what I'm doing now. Like, mm-hmm. I'm right for your sister. I'm making I'm active gonna, effort to be yeah, amazing. Instead of, like, missing therapy. Um, so we get this week's, like, quote of, quote of the week from that therapy session, which is <laughs> <laughs> she's crying, and uh, the lady's like, go ahead, the tissues are free. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious, because the tissues are free, but this visit is not. It's not, like, yeah. It's not at all. You're going to be charged like $2,000. Exactly, so. and like Roman's not even going to pay for this one, because he was going to come, but he didn't come this time. So this he's, is on you, boo. <laughs> this is on you. Yeah. <laughs> I bought you a car and surprised you with a house, so you can therapy's go ahead and- Therapy's on you. Yeah, therapy's on you, Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> um, she does reveal, which we touched on a little bit uh-huh. earlier, that it's been a month and a half, roughly, between their sexual encounters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a quite a long time. I think maybe two weeks, cool, whatever. Like, people are busy, whatever. But a month and a half, that's a long time to go. A long time. What, what I thought initially was, how do you, like, sleep in the same bed with someone? 
wake up in the morning and like you're showering at the same time they are. You're like, probably what's... naked in the process of like getting ready in the morning. <laughs> like you would hope, you would hope. How, like how do you like go all that long time without? being intimate with someone. Even if you don't really care for them, I mean, something might happen. Yeah. You would think, so like, my, oops, I dropped the soap. My it's thought... It's your ball sack. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's ever happened to me before, but... Right. <laughs> Just go. Just go. So, um, <laughs> my thought... Like, initially, I had this thought. I'm like, how are you in, like, this close of proximity with someone and not you know, hook up with them exactly more frequently than a month and a half. But I'm thinking I'm going to maybe give him the benefit of the doubt and say, well, he does work for a nightclub and maybe he is, you know, maybe their schedules are off. Maybe it's like when she's at home resting up because she has a shoot in the morning, he is at the nightclub until, until two three. Or three. Yeah, yeah. And then he comes home, he's resting, she gets up to go and it's kind of their schedules are they off. They miss each other. Probably the only thing I could think of. Yeah. But which then, is legitimate, yeah. Yeah. But then you think, well, when they are together, which they were at the beginning of the episode, and they have a chance to hook up, then why wouldn't that happen? Mm-hmm. So then it brings us back to the full fact circle. that, yeah, full circle, that more than likely uh, there's another deeper issue going on. I don't want to say that he's cheating because that's kind of, you know. Harsh. Yeah, it's harsh. I don't want to say that he's cheating. but We've heard the rumors. I don't want to say he's cheating, but maybe he's gay or maybe he has erectile dysfunction. Those are the only three things that we can think of. So um, unless you have any other suggestions, yeah, then let us know. Um, (laughs) I I mean, that's really the only things I can think of. Like, Uh, That's the only thing I can think of. But I don't know. I don't know. It just is weird. It just, just something is I just suspicious. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, I mean, she she didn't get fat. Like, no, there's nothing. If anything, she looks better than probably she ever did. So yeah. Um. Oh well. Get your life. That's all I'll <laughs> say to them. <laughs> um. Anyway, so um. The, the Black Gala is kind of the the latter half. The Black Gala slash the venue party is mm-hmm. kind of the latter half of the um, episode. Uh, we see Leah on Dirty Pop Radio. And at first, we both kind of looked at each other like, why the hell did they do like that one minute like clip of them there? Yeah, and then they come back. Then they come back and kind of like, you know, <laughs> intertwine it with the rest of the episode. But um, we did notice something... Um, it, and if anyone knows, like we really would like to see what happened. Why was Leah Black's eye blacked or red? It had, it had, I don't know like what blood the, eye. I don't black. know when people what happens when people have that little. I should have googled that. Um, a it's like busted a, blood, a vessel blood vessel in her yeah. eye, maybe. Yeah. But her eye was red when she was in the confession, so we were like. What, what happened there? Um, Looking like a demon. Yeah, and then she's also uh, shouting out her gala, which obviously that's what you're supposed to do when you're on like a yeah, media promote. promotion campaign. Good for you. And she says $25,000 a ticket. It's like the maximum ticket. Is the maximum ticket. And I look at Jake and I'm like, did she mean 25000 I said, hundred? no, 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 no. I think probably 25000 25000 that is crazy. I better see Jesus Christ. Like, I if bet, I yeah. pay $25,000, like, I if I ticket. had $25,000 first off, because I don't, but. <laughs> They're like, this is your ticket to heaven, basically. For like, Flo Rida? Yeah. And Taylor like, Hicks. Like, JC and Beyonce. <laughs> JC and Beyonce. I would be pay 25000 maybe if I had the money. If they were like, you're going to meet Beyonce, and she's going to kiss you on the face. And I'd be like, okay, 25000 Bye. I'd be Did down you know twenty five thousand? Yes, like, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. I maybe that was a mistake. I don't know. I I should probably like Google the tickets or like do some more research on that. Yeah. Uh, because that just seemed like a twenty five thousand dollars, and maybe it's just because I don't have it that I'm so like what twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. People don't but... make that in a year. <laughs> hello. I mean, ding dong, hello, um, right would... here. <laughs> yeah, like that is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I, she it, it had goes, to have mean twenty five hundred. I mean, whatever it was, that's still a lot of money. Twenty five hundred is still a lot for a ticket, I think. But you know, okay, that's people's life. Fans, if you've ever been to a gala that cost twenty five thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars, you. <laughs> you know, uh, let us know. Maybe we're just. It better be for a good yeah, cause. It better be for a good cause. Uh huh. Um, so, <laughs> uh, we then kind of switched to Alexia. 
in her venue. Uh, magazine, magazine organization yeah. party. Mm-hmm. And this, I was happy for this moment because, do you know what I'm about to say, Jake? What? Because she wasn't, she, this, she did not start off with Frankie or Peter. Yeah. This was a moment where her, she was removed from the home. She was actually working. Mm-hmm. She seemed to enjoy what she was doing. <laughs> um, and I'm just like, okay, good for her. Like, we see her, like, going out. The magazine looks, the little clips they showed in the magazine. It, it looks, looks really nice. It looks like a really nice magazine, mm-hmm. yeah. And obviously it's a published in New York. I mean, not New York, Miami. I don't uh-huh. know if it's in other cities. But, but I'm sure it's, like, in yeah. the major cities probably. Like I mean, I've, just in LA. I've never come, I mean, come across this one in LA but I haven't looked for it so that's not saying much but I haven't looked for it yeah but I'm saying it looks like a nice magazine so um good for her but I'm my whole point was just that I'm glad that it did not revolve around her family life or her issues with yeah um you know all the drama she's with at <laughs> home which that's really bitchy, a lot. but anyway um but with, then we see here Alexia said that she doesn't know if she's gonna go to Leah's party mm-hmm. that's very interesting very interesting. I mean, I know that it's probably really taxing to throw a party and, like, get this organized and stuff. But, I mean, all she has to do is really put on a dress and go to Leah's party. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't the, the, she's so the Cuban hard. Barbie. Like, she wants to get dressed. She wants to go out. Yeah. And it's it's a mean girl move. It's a, I'm not going to go to your party just to be It's spiteful. a statement. It's being like, this. I'm drawing a line in the sand. Yeah. I think. But, but then, a little preview from next week's episode, we see... Her she husband being like, wants no, to he yeah. wants to go. So I think that'll be interesting to see what happens because then we see her, like, fly off the handle. Like, you guys are being immature, so I don't know what's going to happen there, mm. you know? Just a mess. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would go. If my husband was going to pay for my $25,000 ticket to go, I would definitely be there. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to spend any money, so it's like, oh, yeah, let's go. Of course. Maybe that's why she doesn't want to go. Maybe she's like, $25,000, I could put that towards good use. Like, Or she's like, I just spent a lot of money on this party. Yeah, I could. I how could am I going to afford to go to this? You know how many pair of shoes I could have for $25,000? Not me, but her. Maybe that's what <laughs> she's thinking, how many pair of shoes she could have. Or she could build another studio for her son. So anything for $25,000. Yeah. So maybe that's why she's just trying to. Save her coins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, they leave that behind. It's kind of weird editing, I guess. They kind of, like, leave that and then go on to uh, Lisa and Adriana having wine at her house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, again, sex is brought up with people that aren't even involved in the sex talk. Because Adriana brings over a little nurse's uniform for Lisa to wear to spice up things. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love that Adriana just happened to have this in her purse. Like Exactly. What? <laughs> Again, contrived moment of this Real Housewives of Miami season. It, was I the only person that was surprised that, she, that Lisa doesn't dress up? Like, that to me... Seems like that would have been Lisa's, like, sex 101. Like, yeah. that would have been something Lisa was you doing in, like... Outfit. And you like when she husband. like yeah. first started having sex, like when she like lost her virginity, it was like she I mean, lost like, her virginity she has, in an she had outfit. That lingerie like, party last season. Yeah, Remember? she dresses up. She you dresses she up. Yeah. So that was just um, <laughs> dumb. I'm just it was just dumb. I don't have anything better to say. It was stupid. <laughs> and it leads us into, of course, this talk about uh, once again, like I mentioned earlier, Lisa not really being neutral, but being more so a potster a little bit. By being like, oh, well, Leah was angry with you because she said that she was setting you up on dates. Mm-hmm. And we messy, messy. And we messy. hear more sides of the story from Adriana saying, we got married. We got the marriage certificate. Then we got married because I wanted my friend who's not an official married, like can not marry people because mm-hmm. I we wanted to. Ha- so it'd be legal so he can just perform the ceremony and then it's already legal. So it's just marriage. I mean, it makes sense, and it's a good excuse. I mean, that's that's a if if it is a lie, that's a very good lie. But I, that's what makes me question it. Like, if it's that good of a lie and that specific, it's probably true. I want to believe just because I like Adrian like and Adriana. I want to be on that side. Well, this is what bothered me about it. Well, she does mention the thing about the justice of the peace and her friend, da da da, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then she also says something about Frederick was the one planning it. And these are two 
alibis that we've never heard before. Yes. And so it's they, like, why do you keep piling <laughs> things on? And then they do the little montage, which is like oh, the um, yeah. When they do that to you, it's kind of like you know that they're trying the to catch you. Thing, out. Yeah. There's 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 holes in Leah's story too as well. There are. And that's what Lisa said. She was like, I don't even know what to play. This is the most confusing. So, it, it, no, and it really is. But Adriana keeps piling on different things. He was planning it. I was planning it. We had just the piece. We went. We got the certificate signed. We didn't get it signed. I, I was dead. Us to get married, I, yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> like I don't. I'm so confused right now. Uh -huh. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I just. I want to believe uh, Adriana and be like, I don't know. I just want to believe her. I just I like really her. hope that on this season's reunion. Andy finally gets to the bottom of it, and it's I know. Like, I mean, what that's what the whole reunion's gonna be focused on. Like, what? Uh -huh. Please tell us the truth. Were you married? Were you not married? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's, it's like stress me out a little bit, and it's a mess. Probably shouldn't be. <laughs> um. So I don't know. Like, our fans probably have some opinions. Oh yeah, this. I've seen Twitter, and it's like, there's. I mean, there's both sides of the story that they're on. Like, it's not like just one side. Which I'm happy about. Yeah. And some of our comments on YouTube, if you watch it on YouTube, leave us comments because I love reading what people say because mm -hmm. some people are like on your side, some people are on my side, which is the good side. I'll just say it. <laughs> yeah. So give us some views and share it. We love, love, love when you pass it on to your friends and mm -hmm. if they like the show, they can keep watching. And also, if you want to download on iTunes, if you're listening on there, give us five stars because that would be amazing. And if you give us like four and a half, I'm cool with that too. Yeah, but uh, give us a comment though. Yeah. Give us, give us comments because we can always improve our show and we want to hear from you and it keeps our lights on here. And also while you're on iTunes, there was a movie made by Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos and it's called Serial Buddies and it's hilarious. It's like Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber. It's like serial killer comedy. It's so funny. But yeah, so we don't really ask for any, there's not really advertisements for our show. But this is a good way for us to keep our lights on. And if you support us, it's really cheap and easy and it's super funny. So why not just watch it? Just buy it and watch it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> that was a good segue, I thought. It was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, um, I don't have a the segue into my next week. Yeah, you did a good segue. <laughs> I don't have a good segue into uh, the venue party, the venue cover party. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's start off by talking about Leah's choker. Uh, let's just have a moment to Let's have a moment that. for the t-shirt and that. What are those? There's those infomercials where it's like the bra kind of flattens things out. Have you seen those commercials? The bra that's like a sports bra? Yeah, that kind of flattens the back. Yeah. I mean, that's a common problem for women. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say it's just Leah because that's a lot of pro people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a common issue. Um, yeah. But if you're going to wear that tight of a t-shirt, no. do a full circle. Check every angle, especially if you're going to be on TV, I think. Well, I didn't realize, and maybe I'm just naive, but I did not realize that Leah Black's boobs were as that big as they big. are. But, like, in that white T-shirt, they were there. Bam. They were yeah. there. You're going to see um, them. Yeah, they were there. <laughs> and then when she turned around, her bra was doing the thing where it was kind of, like, leaning forward a little bit as if it was being pulled down by mm -hmm. the tatas. Yeah. So she should buy, like, a bigger bra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easy solution. Um, but she... she <laughs> Did a, a she did something very clever in that she put a choker on that was just going to deflect any attention from the back of that bra to that choker she had on <laughs> and <laughs> it I don't know did I like it or did I hate it I don't know I thought it looked I thought it went well with the outfit because there was like a it was a throwback vibe with that high waisted skirt kind of a line it was kind of fifties but that was just like. Liberace a little bit for me. I think the choker was a little bit too much for the outfit. It was yeah, a she white t-shirt. She, she had the earring, the choker, and the bracelet all in like shiny ass. Yeah, I, th I mean a white t-shirt like a cotton white t-shirt with like I mean it a, dresses a, it up. It's kind of cool and choker. chic I guess, but it could have been a little bit like there could have been a few things that could have been removed off that necklace. Like Well she things. is the queen of a choker. She will she Of a will statement rock. necklace. Yes. yes. She will rock the choker. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to take some time out to thank Leah Black's choker for making an appearance on this week's it Real Housewives. Does somehow. Um, <laughs> um, so, we mentioned this um, a few minutes ago, but Alexia is like, I can't attend um, the mm -hmm. Black's gala. And 
we we were kind of in when watching the episode. We were kind of questioning. Well, like, wait, is the Black Gala and the, the venue night. party on the yeah. same night, or what exactly is happening? Is it the same weekend? And I guess it's the same weekend. So I don't get what Alexia's kind of reason behind not being able to attend is. She doesn't There's get one. She's one. like, I don't think I'm going to be able to attend. And then she makes Leah get on her hands and knees and beg. That was weird. And yeah, that was weird. And yeah. the only thing I can think of is that she wants $25,000. So <laughs> she's going to get on her hands and knees and beg. It's I mean, not about them being there. It's about she wants money for her cause. She's a good promoter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would get on my knees for $25,000. I'm not even going to address them. <laughs> you set yourself up for them. <laughs> I, I did it purposely. I, I mean, it was a joke. Yeah, it was a self-deprecating remark against myself. I get it. Uh, uh, but um, uh, so... Uh, uh. <laughs> I've gotten on my knees for less than $25,000, <laughs> for free. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Leah, I'm just going to move right on. Late night so, at After Buzz. Gotta so, Leah, um, who who walks in? Anna or mm -hmm. Marisol? Or well, we see Alexia, like. and then it's Joanna, Joanna, and then Adriana. Adriana. And then Marisol, and then Anna. Okay. Yeah. So, when Adriana walks in... She goes up to her. Who does she go? I'm sorry. I, my notes were a little off well, this week, but. Who? Well, Leah comes up and gives them a kiss. Hi. And says, how are you? And acts like nothing's wrong. And then she, goes back who, to, to Roman and Joanna. And then Adriana says to Frederick, oh, you should go say hi to Roman. And then they, that's whenever that whole conversation happened. And then, because Roman is not about Frederick's life right now. Okay. Well, I was going to address really quickly. Um, Alexia comes over to. Leah and is like you're handling the situation incorrectly or like you're being fake or well because Leah kept saying I can't I can't mm -hmm. be fake I can't hide my feelings but then why say hi to Adriana and pretend nothing's wrong like that's what Ad that's what Alexi was addressing and then she's nice to Anna after talking like shit on her basically previous to this okay so my question for you is how do you think it's best in in this situation put yourself in the housewives situation in the housewives pair of Christian Louboutins. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's better to you have active beef with a cast member, you have active drama with them, uh -huh. you see them walk in, do you think it's best to go up to them and say, like, hey, it's nice to see you, just a casual hey, or do you think it's best to kind of ignore the situation? I mean, what makes it worse? If it's me in the situation, I would say, hi, how are you? And then that was it. Just be like, mm -hmm. oh, hi, you know, whatever. But no, nothing past that. Just like, done. Cut it. That's it. Like, acknowledge them. Yes. But these women are a little immature sometimes. So I don't – I think – I thought it was weird that Leah would say hi to them after all the things that she has been saying mm -hmm. behind their back. So it's just, it's just strange. It's strange. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think even as a non-housewife, just as a regular member of yeah. everyday society, if you have an issue with someone, like, and you see them out, it's just kind of the – courteous thing to do just to say hi you don't have to carry in a conversation with exactly. them you don't have to you know i don't know yeah, whatever give them a hug like, you don't have to give them a kiss but just be like hey what's you know what's going on or you know shoot them a smile hi, you look pretty nice to see you yeah you know and keep it moving and so even if it was hypocritical um on leah's part i think it was just kind of it, it, it's it's her making an effort to be a nicer person. So yeah. Alexia uh, would rather her be a bitch and like not speak to them at all. That's drama. gonna cause more drama yeah. at the end. So That's um, that was a moment that I didn't. I you know I, I kind of wanted to pose that question to you. What mm -hmm. do you think is better? How how is this situation best handled? But anyway, so uh, moving on to even bigger drama. The housewives weren't the ones causing all the of focus it. of the drama this week it was the husbands or the fiancés the fiancés uh -huh. or the husbands i don't husband really know because frederick was involved and we yeah. don't know if he's her husband or fiance we'll never know but um what happened well Why was supposedly this? frederick called roman a little girl on twitter and then okay Roman was like, but no. this was after they met. Before, or after they met in after the, they met up at the car, the wash. car wash. They ran into each other. It at was the car after. Wash. Okay, so yeah. in typical Real Housewives fashion, they meet up. 
shake hands, say, make amends, good. and then and somebody then... goes to Twitter. Boom. It always happens. Why is it always Twitter? Like, it's why always is it Twitter. always Twitter? And I thought that was hilarious. They're having this, like, conversation in French, and, like, it was it was, it was so, very like, refined It was arguing. refined, it was and beautiful. then they go to Twitter, and I'm like, really? You just yeah. brought it back down to, like... <laughs> but you notice, like, when they said Twitter... They went into English. Yeah. They started speaking English. Because it brought it back down real quick. It brought it down to the regular level. It was a little, it was like, we're tacky again. Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, um, so, and the argument is over, because I guess Frederick was saying, like, you didn't stick up, you didn't say anything to Joe Francis, but you're. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Why does this matter? Like, why it is this important? And why are these boys getting involved? Like, it's yeah. just like, let the girls argue and Let just the girls stay argue. The men should just, you know, have a united front and always be friends. We've mm-hmm. seen that on other Housewives series. All the other Housewives are And like it's just that. like, the guys yeah. are always just like, our wives and girlfriends and fiancés are, are crazy as Like, yeah. let's just all, like, take <laughs> shots of Don Julio and be friends. And I think that's what <laughs> these guys should do here. Uh, maybe there's some, like, nationality issues going on because they're yeah. all from different countries and they don't want to unite. I don't know. That was, I don't know. That was a bad they just don't explanation unite, I guess. for I don't it. Know. But, um, and then what? And then Frederick confronts Leah earlier on in that. And, mm-hmm. and Leah was like, I'm not going to talk bad about Adriana. And I'm not. And then Frederick was like, you said that Adriana was taking money from you while we were together. And then Leah was like, no, I never said that watch every episode from this past she from this season mm-hmm. and she has said that so there's holes in leah's story there are and again every time that leah and this is a different leah every time that leah is confronted recently she kind of she, powers she does and i don't know if that's i think it has a lot to do with the fact that at the end of last season and on last season's reunion she was just criticized so much for her strong personality and for kind of being Attacked. a bully. Yeah, yeah, she was kind of criticized for being a bully and kind of having that strong personality. And so now it's kind of she wants to take uh, the victim role. And so she knows that she has to choose her, I think her words wisely. I think she she's usually she can... the one that's always attacking someone else. Mm-hmm. Like she's not used to that being on her. Yeah, so I think instead of just trying to fight back, she just kind of goes into, you Rolls know. over yeah. a little bit, yeah. Which is unfortunate for her because I always, obviously, I think that people should just, you know, say what they mean and mean what they say. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess it'll, we'll it's see how strange. it plays out. Yeah. Yeah. Because now her kind of reserved and playing the victim is going to make her into a liar. Mm-hmm. It, ultimately. Because people are going to be like, well, you did say that. You know, you're yeah. a liar. You stuck just, to one story. Stick to that story. Even if it's like semi colored to your side. Just stick to that story so that there's not, you know, discrepancies in mm-hmm. it and holes. Well, um, that that's pretty much how the episode yeah, in, it is. ends. Mm-hmm. Um, did I we guess, miss anything? I don't think so. No. I don't think so either. Um, so, yeah, I guess we can get into our predictions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I have any predictions? And now, you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. Well, next week, I, it looks like Alexia is going to be on the wrong side of the the gang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the gang of three. Marisol, Adriana, and Anna. Cause she, Anna oh. Yeah, because it looks like she wants to go to Leah's party. But I feel like the reason why she doesn't want to go is because she's the other girls are putting pressure on her not to go. And maybe she wants to. Yeah. Or maybe she's sticking it. Because she makes the comment, like, Herman wants to go. And it's kind of like we see her putting her husband's needs before her or her husband's wants before hers and it's like when have you ever cared about Herman before now no never she hasn't we haven't even so. seen Herman until like this episode on the red um, carpet yeah so yeah um I predict that Leah's gala is gonna be fabulous let me say something positive I yeah. think that it's gonna be great um and hopefully I don't know if this is really a prediction or if it's just really like a hope I hope there's no drama and that they don't ruin this because I mean, it's a gala after all. It's for charity. So it's just like for mm-hmm. one night, put the drama to the side. And just have fun. Know. Yeah. And all the girls that are that would be drama for Leah's event aren't there. So it'll be a really fun event, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get an invite next year. Mm-hmm. Give us that Leah. ticket. We'll, we'll um, be volunteering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, between now and next week, if you want to see what I'm up to, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Michelle Renee LA. And you can find me on Twitter at Jake underscore Dupree and on Instagram at Jake Dupree. 
yeah, so thanks for watching, everybody. Happy Labor Day. Boop, boop. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye, Buzz see you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.